everyone and welcome to my studio. I'm Diane and today we're going to paint a really super easy, dramatic and evocative sunset. So let's get started. So I've taped down my piece of watercolour paper here. It is about A4 size, so I'm working on 30 by 22. I've taped it down with some, some wide masking tape because we're going to start off with quite a lot of water which means that if I don't tape it down, it will buckle. It will probably buckle anyway, but that really depends on the kind of paper you're using. And I'm working my way through a stash of the backs of old paintings at the moment. So some of the paper that I've picked up to reuse the back of has lost its size, which means that it no longer resists water at all. So it doesn't really work very well. So this particular piece of paper I'm hoping is going to be okay. It looks like it might be arches or something good. It's not too, too ancient, so hopefully it's still got its size in it. So this is, you could say this was my, uh, my attempt to be economical and reuse paper that was otherwise just taking up space in my um, cupboards. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but we'll know as soon as we put the water on the paper. If it's not sized anymore, you'll immediately see that the water will sink straight in and you'll be able to see through the paper. So keep your fingers crossed for me. So I'm thoroughly wetting the paper, but I'm not going to make it sopping wet. I've drawn in a line here for the horizon, which I've made just below the center of the paper. And when you're going to be painting a wet in wet background, which is what this is, it's kind of underpainting. First of all, you make sure that you've covered every, every inch of the paper so that there's water everywhere. And you can see when you look at it slightly sideways on that it's shiny. Now the thing to do that's going to give you the best effect and the most controllable is just to wait a couple of minutes while it, uh, until the shine goes off. So while I'm waiting a couple of minutes, I will decide which paints I'm going to use today. And because I'm going to try to do a fairly dramatic sky, I'm going to start off with fairly strong colors. And I could use any one of several. Um, so let's say we were going to start with the yellow. This is um, Old Holland, Schrevenichen, I can't pronounce that word, yellow, which is like a cadmium yellow. So it, you're more likely to have cadmium than anything else. So um, I would suggest starting with some cadmium yellow. And then, as far as blues go, um, <clears throat> we could go for cobalt blue, um, which is an option, or we could go for ultramarine, which is always a good sky color, or we could go for phthalo blue, um, which is a dark turquoise, really. I think I will probably stick with ultramarine for this. And then we will need alizarin crimson, which is this one. And that will do for the start of the sky. Now the shine's gone off the paper, so I can start to put in the colors of the sky. And this is where you need a light touch and you don't need to fiddle. So I'm going to be picking up some of my bright yellow, which could be cadmium yellow, or in my case it's Old Holland Chevening yellow. And I'm just dropping that in using a fairly large brush. This is a size 16 Scepter Gold by Winsor & Newton brush that I'm using here. And because this is water, obviously the sky is going to reflect in the water to a certain extent. And now I'm dropping in a little bit of alizarin crimson, which I've mixed with the yellow to make an orangey kind of color, which is going to be sort of clouds, just flicking it in. And at this stage, this kind of painting where you're doing a wet in wet sky always looks ridiculous. I mean, there's no other word for it. It's just ridiculous, but stick with it. Just go with the flow. And now this is ultramarine, and I'm really loving this old Holland ultramarine. It's very soft and 
flows absolutely beautifully, so I heartily recommend that. And I'm just flicking it in. And the thing to do is not to try to smooth out those brush strokes. They will smooth themselves out more than you imagine. So basically just quickly dropping in ultramarine all the way around the patch of yellow. And the good thing about ultramarine is that it doesn't really quickly mix with yellow to make green. You can see that it's keeping its distance, so to speak. You don't really want that much green in the sky. And so here now I'm dropping in some ultramarine mixed with alizarin crimson, which is giving me the, the cloudy, uh, darker reddish blue color for the sky. And I'm putting a, a good amount of that in the water as well. And you can still see plenty of brush strokes. Um, but the point is you've got to trust that the paint knows what it's doing. And so you're going to stop before you do the last stroke. That was something one artist said to me a long time ago. Always stop one stroke before you think you've finished. And that's very good advice. So if you think you're going to just put in one more, don't because it might spoil everything. So I'm now coming back to the painting after it has completely dried. I just finished it off with the hairdryer a little bit to make sure it was totally dry. And as you can see, the brush strokes have blended in quite nicely. And the next step now is going to be to paint in the, uh, the hills in the background. And this is a painting pretty much out of imagination. It's not any particular place. So I'm making it up as I go along. And here now I'm mixing ultramarine blue with alizarin crimson to make a dark, very dark purpley colour, which I'm going to drop in along the horizon line. And I have a little trick for doing that. We don't all have incredibly steady hands for drawing straight lines. So as you noticed, I drew the horizon in with a ruler. Breaks all the rules to use a ruler on a watercolour painting, but you know, needs must. So I drew the line and now I'm going to take my plastic ruler and I'm going to lay it back along the line and I'm going to use that as a guide for drawing in the hills. So I've got a nicely loaded brush with plenty of purple in it and I'm just going to use it as a kind of mask. So I can paint up to the ruler. Don't let the paint go underneath it. it. Looks like it has, but it's actually on top of the ruler. So that's not going to show. And now I'm just building my mountains in the distance, my hills, just painting them in safe in the knowledge that the line is going to remain nice and crisp. So you can you could paint mountains here, real mountains, spiky pointy mountains, or just a gentle line of hills like this. Entirely up to you, both would work perfectly. You can feel like uh, something out of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy here, like Slarty Bartfast building his fjords, you're constructing your hills and your mountains. It's wonderful, the power of watercolour, isn't it? And notice that as you put in the hills, the sky seems to acquire more of a sense of reality once it's got some actual geography underneath it. You can see, ah, oh, yes, that's the sky. And take away the ruler and you have a pretty straight line. Just enough variation to indicate a little island sticking out there on the left hand side, so it looks good. So now I'm mixing up some more of the same colour, the ultramarine blue, to make a nice dark purple again with a bit more water this time. My first mix was quite thick and I'm going to be using my um, sword liner brush, my long haired um, flicky brush, and I'm just going to dash in here with some beautiful free flicking grasses in the foreground. And this is such a good way to give a sense of perspective into your painting. You've got something close at hand and that gives you the distance. You need plenty of paint, doesn't want to be too thick, but plenty of colour in it. And just move those reeds or grasses, whatever you want them to be, along the front of the painting. I don't think it's a good idea to put them all the way along because that sort of makes a barrier into the painting, but it's nice to have them to one side. And then you can just flick a few dots in 
just for sake of variation, try not to get it into the sky, but we'll have to turn that into a bird later. I'll just dab it out for now and we won't even know that happened. If you want to be more careful than me, you could put a piece of tissue paper over your sky to protect it while you're doing the flicky bits. So that wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm just putting in a few slightly thicker grasses there. And uh, this is so easy, this painting. Anyone really, seriously, even children would be able to do a pretty good job of this. I used to teach this, something similar to this, when I was a school teacher. And the kids were always very pleased with it, the way it turned out. And now I'm just going to just drop in a couple of birds into the sky here. And lo and behold, we're really nearly finished. So there we are, that's the finished painting and I do hope you enjoyed being with me this afternoon while I painted this dreamy, evocative lakeside view. Have a go, it's really not a difficult painting and I'm sure you'll be happy with the result. If you have enjoyed watching this please give me a like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again here soon. So for now I'll just say bye bye.